All right, so welcome everyone to the GADEPS uh, seminar. So today we are very happy to have Clément Dupont, who will speak about single valid periods. Thanks a lot. Thanks, uh, Thiago, and, and, and thank you, Hussein and Yunus, for, for the invitation to speak at GADEPS. It's a, it's a pleasure. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. So I will, I will be talking about single valued periods. Um, so this is a part of a, of a joint work with Francis Brown. Um, we wrote uh, three papers uh, in which single valued periods are, are one of the main ingredients. And uh, I will tell you about, well, what single valued periods are and um, why people should care about them and a little bit of what we did with, with them. But mostly what I want to talk about is just, just say things about single valued periods uh, and hope that at the end of the talk you, you have a, a little bit of uh, understanding of what they are and, and, and the, the, the role that they play. Also, I want to say that uh, it's not the first time that single valued periods are mentioned in this, in this seminar. I know that Federico last week or two weeks ago probably uh, talked uh, about single valued periods in relation to um, string theory. And I think that Tiago in his in his talk uh, a while back also uh, had single value periods in his in his talk. So if, you, if you're interested, you can uh, go watch their their talks on YouTube. Uh, all right. So um, let me start with the definition. So again, if you join late, you you probably have to uh, to click pin on my on my pictures on my picture if you want to see me uh, if you want to see what I'm writing, and also a little bit of of my face. Um, so the definition of single value periods is, is quite straightforward and easy, as you will see. I, I guess the, the main point is to uh, is not is not this definition is to is is to um, kind of acknowledge that this is an important um, um, object in terms of, of periods and and to uh, put it in, in the same framework as usual periods. So so first, let's start with something quite classical. So you take k a subfield of C. So for applications to, to, to periods, you probably think of a number field, but any subfield will do. And you take x uh, over k, some algebraic variety. And uh, the usual um, framework in which periods appear is the comparison between two cohomology theories for, for x. Durham, well, algebraic Durham cohomology on the one hand, and uh, Betty or singular cohomology on the other hand. So it looks like this. So you have something called the comparison isomorphism, isomorphism that I will denote by comp. So it goes from, um, so it relates Durham cohomology and Betty cohomology. So let me start with Durham. So Durham cohomology of X is algebraic Durham cohomology, meaning it's, um, so if X is smooth, let's say, it's the hyper cohomology of um, x with coefficients in the uh, algebraic Durham uh, complex, so the, the complex of algebraic differential forms on x. And if x is smooth and affine, it's just the, the cohomology of the usual Durham complex, uh, except that you only take uh, global algebraic forms on x. Okay, so that's, that's algebraic Durham cohomology. This is a k-vector space. That's the whole point of algebraic uh, Durham. And on the other hand, you have uh, Betty cohomology. So what is this by definition? This is just to so take the complex points of X. This is a complex, um, a complex space. In particular, it has a topology that comes from the topology of the complex numbers. And, um, and you take the usual singular homology of this and you dualize. So you take singular cohomology of this space. So it's just singular homology of this guy with rational coefficients uh, dualized, all right? And the comparison isomorphism is an isomorphism between these two things after tensoring with C. So if you tensor Durham cohomology with C and Betty cohomology with C, then you have this natural functorial isomorphism called the comparison isomorphism. It's also called the period isomorphism between, because uh, if you, if you choose bases of, well, rational bases of Durham cohomology and Betsy cohomology, and you write the matrix of this comparison isomorphism, the entries of, of that matrix are precisely periods. So its coefficients are periods. And more, perhaps, uh, 
more concretely, uh, if you take uh, a class of some cycle gamma, so gamma lives in, in, the, in this homology group, and you compute its value on the image by the comparison isomorphism of the class of the form omega. So omega is, is living in this uh, the Ram homology. So omega is a, is a is some closed uh, algebraic form. Uh, then then this is something that you want to uh, write as integral of omega on gamma. Okay, and that's that's a period of the algebraic variety X. All right, so this is kind of the classical uh, setting of periods. That's the, the way that periods are interpreted in terms of cohomology, and that's super helpful for many uh, purposes. And the idea of single, var single value periods is kind of a, a, a twist on this, on this idea. So you take now, uh, and for the rest of the talk, you take K a subfield of the real numbers. So I guess, I guess from, from, from this point on, I will take K a subfield of, of the real numbers. Um, and you get an extra ingredient if, you, if your field is, is um, inside the real numbers. You get complex conjugation acting on um, the complex points of the variety. So let me call it C maybe. So it's an involution of the complex points of X. Okay, for this it's important that, that the, uh, the equations defining X are, are with real coefficients. Okay, otherwise this doesn't make sense. So if X is inside, you know, C to the N, for instance, it's really just Z goes to Z bar on each coordinate. That's just what, what this is. And, and this is not uh, an algebraic mapping. It's not even holomorphic, but still it's a continuous mapping between two topological spaces. So you can um, see uh, what this thing does in singular homology or singular cohomology. Okay, and, and this you call it the, uh, the Frobenius and infinity, F sub infinity, uh, it's just what, what complex conjugation um, induces on Betty cohomology. So the, the notation is F infinity because we think of this as the Frobenius and infinity. Maybe I'll make a comment about this in a minute. Um, so it's an involution of, of this guy here. And so what you can do is, well, you have this comparison isomorphism, so you can sort of pull back this involution on, on Durham cohomology and get an involution of this, of this space here. And this is what we call, or what Francis calls, the, uh, the single-valued period isomorphism. That's the definition. Um, so SV will be my notation for single valued, and this is uh, just this composition or this conjugation. So you, you just take F infinity, this, this for being at infinity, this involution of Betty cohomology, and you, uh, you, you pull it back to an involution of this guy via this isomorphism. And so this, this now is an involution of the Ram cohomology tensored with C. It's a sillinear uh, involution of this, of this space. And in fact, if you, if you think about it, this, uh, you can see a bit more. Uh, this Frobenius and infinity, since it comes from complex conjugation, it's, uh, it, it satisfies some compatibility with the comparison, comparison isomorphism uh, and with complex conjugation of the coefficients here. Um, and so, in fact, you can in fact you can prove easily that this uh, single value period map is actually defined over R. So I can replace C with R here. Okay. So this is called the single value period isomorphism. And I guess I guess that the even though the definition looks a bit a bit ad hoc, the my main point is that this should be viewed as some some analog of the uh, period isomorphism. You kind of want to view these things in the same in the same set. And um, in particular, you want to uh, view the coefficients of this SV map here 
as some variant of periods. And these are called single value periods. So its coefficients are called single value periods. And they'll be the, the main um, characters in this talk. Other questions? Uh, Clement, I think one in uh, Federico's uh, talk or another talk, there was this definition by period mactics and then complex conjugate of uh, period metrics, which that at the end, the, the monodromy is canceled and then you get one single valued object. But for this one, one doesn't need uh, that the K is a subfield of R. So here you are assuming that the, you are a subfield of R. Right. Um, no, that's a, that's a very good point. So um, I'm, mostly I'm assuming that K is inside R for just simplicity. In, in fact, you can you can say something uh, more general, but but you will have to have two conjugate embeddings of your field, and uh, complex conjugation is not an involution of a topological space, but it is a continuous map between two different um, topological spaces. Mm. But you can still play the same game. Ah. Uh, it's just that the interpretation is 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 slightly uh, less clear. But but of course you can you can play this game even if uh, if K is not. Uh, yeah. Maybe can I can I say something also? Sure. I I was fixing K equal Q in my talk, so it was inside <laughs> R. All right, but but it's a good point, uh, Hussein. Absolutely, you can uh, you can play the same game, but it, you, you don't. You, the point is you don't get an you don't get really an, an involution of one space. Now I mean it's here here you have you will have to play with one embedding and then another embedding, so it's it's just a bit weird in terms of linear algebra, but you can, you can play the same game, absolutely. Yeah, OK. Uh, OK. Um, good. So example. If you have more questions, please don't hesitate to interrupt me. I mean, I, I don't have a clear plan or a clear ambition uh, of, of things that I want to say during this talk. So if, if you want to interrupt me and, uh, and, and ask me about precise things, don't, don't hesitate. I'll be happy. So the kind of running example in this talk will be the, the logarithm of some number a. Um, so this is a period because you can write it as an integral from 1 to a of dt over t. Um, and if you want to interpret this as a period, well, you need to pass to relative cohomology. So before I was talking about cohomology of, of one space. There's a more general thing that is called relative cohomology of a space um, relative to a subspace, a scheme or variety relative to a subvariety, and that's that allows the integration cycles to have a boundary, which is exactly what you have here. There's, you have two two endpoints. Um, so it's a period of a cohomology which is h1 of uh, the affine line minus zero. So this is where the um, differential form lives relative to the two endpoints of the integration uh, path here, one and eight. Okay. So this has a name, it's, it's called a Kuma, Kuma motive. And it's one of my favorite motives. Um, and it, it's, it's important in the theory of motive because it's an extension of Q of minus one, which is uh, just the H1 of A1 minus zero by Q of zero. So it's an extension like this. If you look at the period matrix, so the, the matrix of the comparison isomorphism, it's a two by two matrix that whose shape reflects this kind of extension structure. So you have one and two pi on the diagonal, which are the period matrices of these of these two uh, uh, rank one motives, and you have a log a uh, in the corner. All right. Um, and the, the point is that uh, if you look at um, if you look at this log a here, and and you start viewing a as a parameter which can vary, then you know that log a is a is a multi-valued function. Of a, okay, there's no uh, if a is now a complex parameter. For, for instance, if you if you if your uh, point of view is is that of uh, period functions. Uh, then a is a parameter that lives on c minus zero, and uh, there's no there's no uh, 
there's no complex algorithm. It's a multi-valued function. And, and the point is that in the single-valued uh, period matrix, you will get single-valued functions. So how does this work in this example? So the single-valued period matrix, meaning the, the, the matrix of a single-valued period isomorphism, looks like this. So S. Um, so if you, if you think in terms of, of the definition, the definition is you have to take the matrix P, multiply it on the left by the matrix of the Frobenius and infinity, and then on the left by the inverse of P. But in fact, the compatibility between F infinity and the comparison isomorphism uh, tells you that the matrix of this uh, composition is just the, the conjugate of the, of the period matrix. So you get a, a simpler formula, which is P inverse times P bar. If you do the computation, uh, you have 1, 0, minus 1, and in the corner you get log uh, modulus of a squared. So you see that you have replaced uh, the multi-valued function log a with a single-valued function, which is log of modulus of a squared. And in general, in, in single-valued period matrices, you get single-valued periods for a good reason, because uh, where, did the, where does the multi-valuedness come from in, the, in period matrices? It comes from the fact that in Betty realization, uh, you have a local system, meaning that uh, you have monodromy when, when you follow paths on, on the base space. The base space is the space of parameters here. It's the space of, of A's. Um, but in the single-valued period map, uh, Betty cohomology does not appear anymore. It's just Duram and Duram. So if you, if you take the point of view of, of periods over a base, you only see um, a vector bundles. And at least the risky locally, a vector bundle is, is, is trivial. So you can take um, uh, on, on most of your space uh, bases of the vector bundle. And you get matrices of things that are um, bona fide uh, single valued functions. Okay. So this is this is the example that you that you get here. Um, good. And but but the, the, the fun thing about single value periods is that even though one motivation could be uh, to kind of kill the monodromy in in um, in period functions, the definition does not require to be on a base. It does not require to have monodromy or anything. It works for periods over a point. So that's 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 kind of the 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 right point of view to have it, it doesn't it, it's not something about it, it's even though it, it solves something or it's, it says something interesting about periods over a base it does not require it to be on a base um and and for instance if you look at this two pi i guy here which is a constant um period it has a single valued version if you will which is this minus one here in the in, in the period in the single valued period matrix okay so this is our, our first example um, just a remark. Um, this SV, this single value period map, is a, is a version at uh, P equals infinity of something that, that exists for all prime numbers P, which is um, p-adic periods, or some one of the things that are called p-adic periods. Um, by that, I mean the following. So if you, just to simplify, if you take x a variety over Q, then for almost all primes p, you get uh, something called the crystalline cohomology of x. And it compares to the Durand cohomology of x by a, a sort of crystalline period map. So it looks like this. So you take Durand and you extend scalars to qp, p numbers. And this is isomorphic to crystalline cohomology of x. And what you gain from crystalline cohomology is something called the crystalline Frobenius, F sub P. Which essentially comes from a lift of, of, the, of the Frobenius to, uh, to, to some integral model of X. Okay. And so you can play the same game and you have something called uh, I mean, you can, well, 
I don't know. I don't know how, how I should call this, but anyway, I, I, I won't write anything. You can just take this crystal and Frobenius and 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 pull it back to to here, and you get uh, a p-adic period map, uh, which relates the RAM and the RAM with coefficients in QP, and the coefficients you call them p-adic periods, and they're interesting. Um, and for instance, for my favorite example for the Kumar uh, motive. Um, so here you, you, you want to choose a prime P such that um, the p-adic valuation of A is zero. Um, what is the, what is the, 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 the matrix of the crystal in Frobenius in a, in a rational basis, sorry, in a rational basis of, of, of the RAM? It looks like this, you have one, zero, you have P here, so kind of the p-adic version of two pi i is, is P in this, in this setting. And uh, the p-adic version of log A is, uh, in this case, log, so p-adic log, yeah, right, like this, of A to be 1 minus P. So that's, so P is the, the variant of 2 pi i, and this is the variant of log A. Where the, if, if you don't know what the p-adic log is, it's just uh, the usual thing in the, in the, in the unit circle uh, center at 1, so log of 1 plus U is log P is u minus u squared over 2 plus u cubed over 3 and so on for uh, u uh, strictly smaller than 1 in the, in the p-adic norm. OK? All right. More questions, maybe? Um, OK. So maybe, maybe more examples, uh, if you want to kind of know where, where the motivations come from. So another, another example, which is a generalization of my first example, it's uh, single valued multiple uh, or, or just single valued polylogarithms. Let's stick with polylogarithms. So this dates back to uh, actually a paper by Bateson and Dolini in the 90s, who were trying to understand Zaghi's conjecture on on um, on Dedekind zeta functions. Um, so just let me do the, the, the example of the dialog rhythm. So the dialog rhythm is, is this very cool function, lead to of z, z is a complex number. And it's defined by uh, this series, sum of z to the k over k to the n, uh, k squared, sorry. This would be the nth logarithm. I'm, I'm sticking to the, sticking with the, the, the dialog rhythm. And it has a, a an integral um, description like this, so minus the integral from 0 to z of log of 1 minus t over t dt. Yes, that's correct. And if you think about it, you, you, you're going to get a multi-valued function of z. So a priori, this, this thing is, has a, a, a preferred branch on the unit circle around 0. But if you want to extend it to a, to a function on the complex plane, uh, well, you're going to have to avoid z equals 1. Uh, first of all, there, there's, a, there's a pole there. and um, Well, I mean, there's, there's a singularity there, at least. And, and if you, if you uh, wind around 1, you, you're going to get some monodromy. So you will get a multi-valued function of, of z in, in, on, on um, c minus 1. And people have realized so that there, there's a function that's kind of better behaved in terms of, of uh, multivaluedness, which is called the bloch wigner function. And uh, I mean, one, one way to come up with, with uh, this function is to compute exactly the monodromy of lead to of z and to kind of concoct some clever uh, counter term that cancels the monodromy. And in this case, uh, the definition is, is as follows. You take the imaginary part of lead to of z plus log modulus of z times log 1 minus z. So lead to of z and log 1 minus z are two multi-valued functions. But if you, if you do this, this, uh, this, um, this sum and take the imaginary part, then it, it becomes some um, single-valued function with, uh, with uh, real values. So this is single-valued. And you can view this. You can view this this function as coming from the single-valued period map um, in a way that's 
kind of a, a slight variant of what I said, and maybe I, I can comment on that later. So if you if you take the period matrix, so there's from from this representation you can build some motive, which is called a dialogue with a motive. It's a, it's a rank three motive, and I'm, I'm going to write the period matrix like this. You have one. Uh, so on, on the diagonal, you have 1, 2 pi, and 2 pi is squared, which tells you that your motive is a, is a by extension of q0, q minus 1, and q minus 2. And uh, above the diagonal, you're going to have something like, um, here you have minus log 1 minus z. Uh, Clément? Yes. I think the bracket and the definition of the dialogue algorithm should end at the li2. You only want to take the imaginary part of li2, right? And not of the whole expression. No, I think I do want to, to take this uh, the, the whole thing. Oh, the whole thing? Okay. If, if you if you end the bracket here, then 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 you get something that's not even real valued. Ah, right. Oh, yeah. Then you put the ah. Okay, you could rewrite yeah, the yeah. argument function on the on the right. Then right. right. Ah, yeah. Yeah. right. Exactly. You can close the bracket here and and and, and change the log here by arg. It's the same. Right. Thank you. Yeah, that's the expression. I know. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, okay. So the period matrix. Uh, Right here, you have 2 pi i log z. And the important coefficient is this lead 2 pi. It, it, it's in the corner uh, of the period matrix. Cool. So you can apply the single valued um, formalism to this matrix. And, and so you, you want to compute p inverse times p bar. So it's not going to be exactly the end result. So p inverse times p bar is going to have some uh, the, the, it, it's going to be some upper triangular matrix with ones and minus ones in the on the diagonal because of the two pi is here. So two pi gets replaced by minus one and two pi is squared by a plus one. So you get exactly something like this with with interesting coefficients here. And um, I'm going to multiply this on the left by a matrix T. So T is just the, the diagonal matrix with the right coefficients so that the product is a unipotent matrix. So now I, I change this uh, minus one to plus one in this product uh, without changing uh, essentially the, the, the coefficients. Uh, and, and now that since this is a unipotent matrix, you can take the log of this. Oh, sorry. So the log of the matrix. So it doesn't change much about the coefficients that appear in the matrix. It's just, it's just uh, nicer. And maybe if you ask me a question later, I can, I can maybe try and Try, try and explain why this, this logarithm is actually important. Um, and, and here you get a matrix, which is now uh, not potent. And you see, um, maybe let me multiply by one half just for uh, simplicity. You see, well, let's take the one, the one half. Um, you see minus log modulus one minus z squared, uh, log modulus of z squared, so which is what we what we're used to, and then you see two times i times the uh, bloch wigner function in the corner. Okay, so that's a slight variant of the uh, of the logarithm example where you, you produce uh, interesting functions that are called um, single valued polylogs uh, in this way. And um, and and again, the, the the cool part of this construction is that you don't have you don't even have to compute the monodromy and and try to cancel it by hand. There's this 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 machinery of single value pairs that just produce single valued functions that are replacements for your favorite period functions. Uh, can you remind the geometry of this one? It... The geometry of this of this period matrix? Yeah. Sure. Um, so it comes from. Uh, that's a very good question. Thanks. It's my second favorite uh, motive. Uh, so the geometry of this is so you want to write uh, lead two of z maybe as a as a as a as a, an, a, a surface integral over things like this, so zero uh, t one t two less than z. So let's say z is a is a is a real a, a real um, positive real number just just for simplicity. Uh, d z d t one d t two over. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, better. So this is going to be better. Uh, so you can rewrite this thing as an integral over just zero one squared. Um, d t1 d t2 z d t1 d t2 over 1 minus z t1 t2 
So this is this is correct because if you expand one over one minus z t1 t2 as a geometric series and integrate, you you find exactly this this series here. So that's that's the correct thing, and uh, and so the geometry of this is well, you you're on a2. Um, let me. Oh, I can I can make straight lines. I think so. This is a2 and. Uh, make straight lines but maybe um, this is not so great okay so this is a2 and this is a uh, this thing here is 0 1 cross 0 1 can be better okay so this is my integration domain here um, and um, and I have to remove uh, the locus where the, the the form has a pole which is z t1 t2 equals 1 and it, it's, it looks like uh, some kind of hyperbola like this this is uh, z t1 t2 equals 1. Okay, so this is t1 equals 0, t1 equals 1, t2 equals 0, t2 equals 1. And, uh, and you call b the union of the, of the four lines, and a the a just this, this hyperbola. a is this hyperbola. And you look at h2 of affine space minus uh, a. So A secretly depends on Z, actually. B does not. Um, so your form is a form on this space, but, but the, you have to take relative cohomology, so you take this relative to B. So B minus an intersection of A. And that's, that's the motive. It has exactly this, this period matrix. All right. Do you have more questions? Okay. So polylogs. All right. Um, so I want to mention also another fact that you can, uh, in fact, use this idea of, of just taking Frobenius on Betty and moving it back to Dura. Um, you can you can use it to tackle things that do not really come from algebraic geometry. So let me explain what I mean. Uh, so when, when, one thing that we've studied a bit with Francis recently is um, kind of hypergeometric hyper functions, so single-valued versions, single-valued Euler type hypergeometric integrals. So the example is the, the 2F1 function. So two f one of a b c, so a b c are the parameters and y is the uh, the variable. Uh, it has a, a an, an Euler type integral description like this. So there's a, a gamma factor times the interesting stuff. So the interesting stuff is integral from zero to one of x to the b one minus x to the c minus b one minus y x to the minus a times the algebraic form dx over x one minus x. And let's say we're interested in, 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 in this kind of function, but A, B, C may not be rational numbers. Okay, so maybe you want to view A, B, C are as you know, complex parameters, or you want to view them as formal parameters around, um, around a rational point or something like that. And, um, and in this case, these things are not periods. Okay, they don't come from geometry. Um, and and the, the relevant, the relevant cohomology groups, so you can still view them as, as period inside quotation marks of some cohomology groups that were studied a lot uh, by Aomoto and then many other people. But I think it started with, with Aomoto for this, for this precise um, kind of uh, thing. And Aomoto actually considered single valued versions already. Um, the relevant cohomology groups are things like H, H1 of A1 minus a bunch of points. In this case, it's 0, 1, and the inverse of Y. With coefficients in some um, rank 1 object that depends on A, B, C. So this is a rank 1 uh, either local system or vector bundle with connection. Um, which encodes this kind of uh, this kind of non-algebraic 
uh, three factors in the integral. And it does not come from geometry if A, B, and C are not uh, rational. Um, okay, so you can you can produce in this way some single valued versions of hypergeometric functions for any type of parameters. And, and, and these are actually um, uh, relevant for, for many um, constructions in the literature. And, and, and another example that, uh, that I really like is uh, related to what Federico was telling us about uh, two weeks ago, which is amplitude and street theory. So related to uh, Federico's talk, I won't say much about this because um, Federico has already uh, said a lot um, about this. The, the idea is that in, in string theory, uh, um, there's this idea that particles are like strings and uh, strings can be open or closed. So there are essentially two main uh, worlds in string theory, the, 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 world, the world of open strings and the world of closed strings. So open, open strings look like this, and closed strings look like this. Really close, like this. Um, and, and morally, open strings have amplitudes that are usual periods. And closed strings have amplitudes whose um, interpretation is uh, inside the realm of single value periods. Okay. Um, and in some sense, this was the motivation for, for my work with uh, Francis on single value periods in the first place. So just to mention a theorem that we proved, which was kind of the motivation to understand better the single value formalism. And if you want to know more about these kinds of things, you can, you can uh, go check Federico's talk. Um, our theorem is that for genus zero amplitudes, so the genus here I'm referring to is the genus of the surface on which the strings are able to move. And we only uh, did calculations in genus zero. And Federico is, uh, has been talking about genus one amplitudes, uh, which are more complicated for many reasons. But for genus zero amplitudes, um, closed strings, so closed string amplitudes, are, in some sense, uh, the single value versions of open string amplitudes. And I'm putting the single value versions in quotation marks because right now it doesn't make any sense. Uh, and maybe I'll have time to clarify this uh, later. So our theorem is more precise. It's, um, it really builds a bridge from uh, open string amplitudes to closed string amplitudes. And a priori, those amplitudes have nothing to do with each other. They, they, they're, they're defined by very different formula, formulas. Um, but, but the theorem is that if you know, essentially if you know open string amplitudes, there's, there's a machinery that produces for you closed string amplitudes. And, and, and produces a, a lot of, of uh, extra knowledge on, on how these two things, these two worlds interact. So I won't say more about, about this. I mean, it, I, I can say more if you want. I, uh, if, if you want to ask questions and kind of derail, derail uh, this talk, don't, don't hesitate. Um, are there questions? No, we're good. So I guess what, what I wanted to talk about is how, how to compute single value periods. Because the definition is, is, is clear, it's quite easy to understand. I think there's, there's no uh, real difficulty. Um, but somehow, if you're interested in one single value period, it's a bit annoying, this definition, because you have to compute the whole period matrix. And uh, usually, period matrices are, are quite lar large. If you're interested in, in, in you know, random periods, you're interested in just one guy, but you have to compute the whole period matrix. And you, you really do have to compute the whole period matrix because you have to invert it. And to invert a matrix, you really have to know all the coefficients. Uh, so it's a bit annoying. Um, and, and you'd like to have a, a, better, a better understanding of single value periods that, that does not go through inverting large matrices. And that's kind of the, um, the question that we answered with Francis, and that's uh, 
um, behind this theorem. So let me call this uh, second paragraph, how to compute single value periods. So the idea is that what is a single value period? Where well, it's an it's an entry of the single value period matrix, and to specify the entry, you need a, a, a row and a column, and to specify the column, you you, you have a class in the round cohomology, but the row is a, is a class in the dual space. Okay, the the, the row corresponds to um, the row number, if you wish, corresponds to specifying uh, a linear form on the round cohomology, and this is not a usual. Uh, this is not a usual kind of thing, uh, forms on Durham cohomology or Durham homology classes. But uh, if you think about Poincaré duality, it becomes uh, suddenly uh, much more usual. And that's the idea. So it, now I, I will have to make a, a little bit of a, an extra assumption in order to apply some version of Poincaré duality. So now x over k will be uh, smooth and projective. And then you call n the dimension just to um, specify things. Uh, and, and I'm going to take inside x some um, thing that I call A union B inside x. It's a simple normal crossing divisor. So the picture looks like this. So you have x, let's say x is the surface, for instance, and you have A, which could be something like this. It does look like an A, right? I didn't make it on purpose. Um, and B is some other things like, like this. This and some other component like this, for instance. That's your B. Okay. Uh, so one example is actually, uh, thank you, Hussein, for asking. One example is actually here already on this slide. Um, except, that, except that in this example, X, which is A2, is not uh, projective. And in my next, in my next uh, um, uh, slide, I want x to be projective to apply concrete duality. Um, and I will be interested in uh, the middle cohomology of x minus a um, relative to b. So that's, that's the kind of cohomology that I'm interested in, meaning I'm, I'm, in terms of periods, I'm integrating forms on x that may have a pole along a on cycles that may have a boundary along B. And um, because we have resolution of singularities, essentially any motive comes from such, um, such, a, such a geometry. So for general reasons, in fact, this is kind of the, uh, the most general type of motive that you can think of. There's, there's nothing else. OK? And uh, the cool thing is that if you, if you write a motive like this, its dual has a very similar shape that's given by Poincaré Verdier duality. It tells you that the dual of such a space is uh, actually uh, up to a tape twist, the cohomology of x minus b relative to a. So here, you, it, it does something really weird. You, you kind of uh, uh, exchange the roles played by A and B. In terms of periods, it's, it's really unusual because uh, you exchange the role played by the, the, the boundary uh, locus and the polar locus of the form. Or you exchange the roles played by the forms and the, uh, and the cycles. It's kind of weird, but it's, uh, it's what Poincaré uh, Verdier duality uh, tells you. And, and uh, I want to say that this is super classical. This is really Poincaré duality if A and B are empty. Um, um, in, in this case, it's just uh, usual Poincaré duality for X. But uh, I'm really interested in, in cases where A and B are really not empty. Um, and the theorem that we, that we proved with Francis is that now, with, with this uh, sort of presentation of cohomology groups, you can compute very easily uh, single value periods. So to compute a single value period of this cohomology group, you, you need a form. 
And just for simplicity, I will take global forms. Okay, but we have more general uh, statements. So we take omega, a global form, and uh, something that's actually really important for this theorem is, is that the forms will have logarithmic singularities. So I'm taking a global form with logarithmic singularities along A. So a global section of the sheaf of N forms on X with singularities, uh, logarithmic singularities along A. Uh, so this is my sort of uh, my column in the single valued period matrix. And for the row, I need a, um, a linear form, meaning an element of this dual space. But the dual space is some guy like that. So a natural natural elements in 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 in, in this space are coming from um, global logarithmic forms with pole along B. So I'm taking another one, call it new, a global logarithmic form on uh, x minus B, a global form on x with logarithmic poles along along B. Good. And then you can you can play the single value pair again meaning you can uh, take the class of new, viewed as a, a linear form on, on the durham karl multi group, uh, and apply it to SV of class of omega. So this is some entry of the single value period matrix. And it has this shape, it's one over two pi i to the n times the integral on the complex points of x. So this is a, a smooth uh, projective variety. Uh, of new wedge omega bar. So the single value periods, uh, what this, this theorem says is that single value periods very concretely are exactly those types of integrals. So they're dz, dz bar integrals on, on, on some projective variety. Um, but the, the subtlety here, I'm going to say that the, the, the main subtlety of this theorem is the, 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 the poles. If A and B are empty, this theorem is essentially trivial. But the, the point is that uh, if you look at this form, since omega and nu have poles, this form has poles. So nu which omega bar has singularities along uh, A and B. So that this integral is, is actually not uh, you know your your usual uh, integral of a of a smooth form on a on a, on a manifold. This form is not is, is very much not a smooth form on on uh, on X. It has poles, but still the integral converges. And why does it converge? Well, because uh, omega and you have logarithmic uh, singularities. If you take higher order poles, it does not converge at all. And for higher order poles, I really don't know how to. Uh, um, how to compute single value periods. So question, uh, what happens for higher order poles? So th there should be some kind of recipe to regularize those, those, those integrals if omega or nu has a pole of order two or, or above. Um, I don't know what it is, but um, I think that's, a, that's an important question because in practice, if you compute periods, um, your differential forms don't necessarily have uh, uh, log poles. So, so x, 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 x minus a is not necessarily a phi. Um, no, not necessarily. Oh. But I mean, but even it, it, even if it is, you, you can also be interested in uh, in uh, in higher order poles. Like if x if x is an elliptic curve and a is a point or two points, then uh, you have interesting. I mean, your favorite uh, x dx over y uh, form, which has. Uh, some higher, higher order pole. So that's already from, from the, the, the classical theory, you get examples that you want to compute, but that are not strictly speaking tackled by this theorem. Hmm. Okay. Um, just, just yes. Question. I mean, locally, you can always assume that your forms have logarithmic poles, right? You subtract an exact form, and then maybe you could use some Stokes theorem to say that the integral doesn't change, or? Sure, yeah, yeah, you're right. So there's a, there's a general theorem that tells you that uh, which is due to Griffiths and Delini, which tells you that logarithmic forms um, describe the whole cohomology. But so, so this means that apart from the fact that I've taken global forms here, um, this theorem essentially describes everything for you. But in practice, you can be interested in, in, uh, 
in 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 uh, naturally defined intervals with 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 forms of higher order, um, with forms that are that have higher order poles, and um, you pr in many situations you probably don't want to go through the the hassle of subtracting an exact form and so on, so that you, you're you're integrating a, a logarithmic form. So in, in practice, it's 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 um, theoretically doable, but uh, probably uh, not very um, I don't know interesting. Uh, Clement, just last question. I think it is possible to write down this one in terms of the periods of v and omega, and their complex conjugate. No, it's similar to the classical uh, uh, case. Uh, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You're right. So. Um, Good point. Thanks for uh, derailing uh, this uh, this train. Um, exactly. So a, a corollary of this is what some people call a, a double copy formula. Um, this this comes from the physics um, terminology, but uh, I, I guess I guess from the uh, uh, if I understand correctly your question, you're thinking of the, the, the Riemann period relations for a, for a, a Riemann surface. So it tells you that your, your single valid period, which looks look like this, nu wedge omega bar, can be written as um, a quadratic expression in, in periods of nu and omega. So it looks like this, so you take a sum um, of uh, some coefficient that I won't write. Maybe I will. Um, can I write it? So, um, so you sum over bases like uh, gamma and delta, so they're elements in, in, in some thing. So here you, have, you will have some intersection product between the dual uh, elements. And here you will have the, the interesting part, integral of mu on gamma times integral of omega on the conjugate of delta. So what are, what are gamma and delta? So gamma is a basis of um, something. So singular homology of uh, x minus uh, b relative to a. And delta is also, I mean, the class is delta. Class of delta are basis of the other guy, and these um, coefficients are are essentially coming from intersections of, of cycles. So I guess I guess we're saying this is what you, you had in mind. It's kind yeah, of exactly. a period relation in this in this more general setting, right? Um, okay. Are there more questions? So the next thing I want to talk about, but I have only maybe seven minutes left, so I'm going to be quick about it, is how to view this in, in the Tanakian formalism. So let, let's call this uh, third section, Tanakian interpretation. Um, so, right, so um, you, you start with some, uh, some Tanakian category of motives. I don't want to specify anything, um, but I mean, you can be very naive and think that C is, is some Tanakian category of systems of realizations, so motives over a field K. Um, and you have, for instance, you have a Durham uh, fiber functor from C to vector spaces over K. And this leads via the Tanakian um, machinery to a group, G Durham, which is the group of group scheme of functorial automorphisms of this fiber functor. So this is the Durham Gallo group. And it's kind of at the center of the theory of motives. Like the, 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 the question or many questions can be reformulated in terms of, of the, 
the properties of, of this of this uh, of this Gauss group. And now the, the the fun game to play is that you take another flag of fun curve, so omega betty. So this goes to uh, q vector spaces, but you can extend scalars if you wish and, and, and make it go to k vector spaces. Um, and now if you have two, um, if you have two um, um, fiber functors, you can you can produce something that's not quite a Galois group, but uh, a torsor, so T uh, uh, Betty Duran. It's the torsor of isomorphism, functorial isomorphisms from one to the other. And it's a torsor under under this motivic gamma group, the Duran gamma group, and on the other side, it's also a torsor under the Betty version of the motivic gamma group. And um, now, dually, you can take the, the functions on those on those spaces. So dually, you can look at um, something that I will call P Duran, which is just the the space of functions on G Duran. And it's a Hopf algebra because it's functions on a, on a group scheme. It's the Hopf algebra of things that um, many people call Durand periods. So the Durand period is just a function on the Durand cover group. And you can look at something that's called PMOT, which is the, the functions on this torsor. So this is not a Hopf algebra because P, because the torsor is not a group, uh, but it's, uh, it's it's still an algebra. It's the algebra of motivic periods. All right. So you have uh, Durand periods on the one hand and motivic periods on the other hand. It's just names right now, but um, concretely, um, this torsor has a distinguished point, which is the usual natural comparison isomorphism that we've been playing with uh, for the last hour. So this comparison isomorphism is a complex point of this torsor. So this means that it's a, it's a map from uh, P mod to C. It's, a, it's an algebra morphism from P, from the algebra of motivic periods to, to the complex number. That's usually called the period morphism. And, uh, and the, the images of motivic periods through this period map are literally just periods, the usual periods. So you, have to, you want to think of, of these guys are as, um, you want to think of elements of PMOT as just abstract periods and their images through this map as kind of concrete complex periods. And now you have the single value period map. And this is actually uh, a point of the Duran gamma group. And it's a real value point, as we as we saw. And you can view this as some map that I'm still calling SV from the run periods to um, the real numbers. Okay. And um, so you want to call this the single value period morphism or something. Um, and the, already something quite funny happens because, um, well, OK. So maybe something that, that's better, something that you can do that's better, is to lift uh, SV to uh, a point value in motivic periods. There's, there's always a, a, a universal comparison isomorphism valued in motivic periods for completely uh, dumb uh, Tanakian reasons. So you can lift uh, by using this SV to a, a, a dura, um, a point of the Durham gamma group valued in P mod. And so this gives you some motivic single value period map from uh, P Durham to P mod. Which is just a lift of the single value period map to, uh, to motivic periods. Um, and in practice, it's computed by the same formulas, except that you, 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 you write um, superscripts mod everywhere. Um, and some other thing that you can do is is go the other way uh, is going the other way. There's a, also in some cases natural maps from in the other direction. So sometimes, so yeah, let me just write something unprecise. Um, so this is called the Duran projection. Um, 
and uh, it's a, it's a map that's not defined on all of PMOD. So let me just write it like this. So it's a map from PMOD to PDRAM, but it's not defined on, all, on the whole of PMOD. It's defined on some subalgebra of PMOD uh, that's well identified. It's called the, the, the subalgebra of um, um, periods or, or separated uh, motivic periods. Um, I don't have time to explain all of this, but it's uh, it's kind of a partially defined map on, in the other direction. It's called the, the RAM projection, the RAM. Um, so it, it 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 does something quite funny. It, it replaces the motivic period with a with a Durand period, and um, in some sense, it's it's behind. Um, so now, now now what you can do? Sorry, I, I'm I'm going to conclude in in just one minute. So you you also have your your uh, single value period maps and and usual period maps here in this diagram. And uh, if you believe in the in the period conjecture, then uh, this map is injective, the period map is injective. So it means that if you take a period, your usual favorite complex period, you can lift it. Oh, sorry, what did I do? You can lift it. So you take your favorite period here, alpha. You can lift it if you believe in the period conjecture. You can lift it in in just one way to a motivic period. Then, if you're in the right cohomological framework, you can apply this map. This is the round projection. And then the single value projection. And this gives you another complex number, which is real in this case. That's called the single value period. So there's, there's a way to go really from, if you believe in the period conjecture, from periods to single value periods in, in one go. And this is kind of what was behind the, uh, the, the imprecise statement of this theorem that, that closed string amplitudes are the single value versions of open string amplitudes. It's, it's meant in this way via this kind of bridge from periods to single value periods. Um, and um, and I, I will just finish with, a, with, a, with a, a little bit of a puzzle. So now what you can do is, is uh, you have this, this single value period map from the round periods to motivic periods. And you have, in, in many cases, the round projection that goes in the other way. So you can compose those two things. And this gives you an endomorphism of, of uh, motivic periods. So composition, um, so um, SV mod composed with the round projection. So it's, uh, it's not defined everywhere, but it's, uh, it's defined in a well-identified well subalgebra of P mod. So it's, kind of a, it's, an, it's an endomorphism of that, of that subalgebra. That's not trivial at all. I mean, it's, uh, it has a kernel. It has a very big kernel. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not at all uh, surjective. It's just some weird endomorphism. And um, kind of the question is: So what is this? How should I view this? And what are the dynamics of this thing? So what? What if I start iterating this this construction? Uh, it's a bit bizarre because because why would anyone do this? But in practice, it's computable. So you can you can compute what this thing does. And it does very interesting things. Um, and um, I wonder if, uh, if it plays a role somewhere or if, uh, if, um, if, if the, the dynamics of this endomorphism can be understood. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, the puzzle that I want to, to conclude with. So thank you. Sorry for the, the three minutes. All right, so let's thank Clement. Questions? I will ask my question in the non-recorded session. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, let me stop recording, and then we go to the informal. All right. <laughs>